In the previous part of the lecture, we discussed about the integrated immune response and we also had uh, what are the surface barriers that protect us from the entry of the dangerous pathogens. Now, in this part of the lecture, we will be discussing about the mechanisms of innate immunity. So, if you remember, uh, our immune system is made up of the innate immune response and the adaptive immune response. So, in this, uh, in this part of the lecture, we will be focusing more on the innate immunity or innate immune response. So, part of the innate immune response is the complement system. So, it's basically a system where uh, this one involves proteins only. So, there is um, the, the, the cell involvement here is minimal. So it's just like uh, in warfare, you are using drones and robots uh, in engaging war rather than the actual soldiers, whereas the soldiers are our immune cells. So there are 30 different kinds of complement proteins that circulate in the blood. So one of those types can recognize the antibodies clustered on a cell surface. So if you remember, antibodies, these are the proteins, these are protein molecules that attaches, that they are the ones that identifies pathogens and attaches themselves on the surface of the cells. Or rather, not any cell, but the non-self cell, the, the enemy cell or the pathogenic cell, such as the bacteria, and sometimes even the viruses. So once uh, it recognized that there is an antibody tagged on a certain cell or a certain uh, virus, so it results, uh, it basically activates. So it results in the enzymatic cleavage of another complement protein, so C3. So C3 is another protein. It's different from the one that can recognize the antibodies. The one that can recognize the antibodies will first, of course, detect that, oh, there is an antibody because the antibody is just like a homing device. So it tells the uh, immune system who to attack, um, uh, or rather who is the enemy and who is not, so who should be the one to attack. So basically, when it sees the antibody, it activates and cleaves the C3. So once the C3 is cleaved, it becomes activated. So the C3 then moves to attach directly to the cell membranes. So it coats the invading pathogen and the host cells nearby, and it also starts a chain reaction of activating the other, uh, other 28 complement protein. So basically what happens here is, for example, you have this C3 protein that becomes activated because when, the, uh, when you have your pathogen, uh, uh, when uh, when you when you when a pathogen enters the body and an antibody identifies it, one of the complement that patrols inside the blood, one of the complement proteins, uh, cleaves the C3 protein. So here is your original C3 protein, and then this is uh, the cleave portion. So it will then start a chain reaction, and then you will have multiple uh, complement. Uh, it initiates the complement reaction of involving other proteins as well. So it's a cascade of reaction that involves many complement proteins. So when I say many, they are really many. Okay, so basically you have here another uh, view of that. So it's either you have antibodies here. So the green ones are the antibodies and this is your pathogen. Or it can be based on pathogen-associated molecular patterns. So these are patterns on the surface of the pathogens that tells our immune cells that uh, this is an enemy uh, based on the site. Okay, so basically, uh, either the antibody tags or the pump can activate the cleavage of the C3 molecules. So once this C3 is uh, cleaved, so you have this uh, uh, cut C3 uh, molecules, C3 protein molecules. So what those, what do those C3 molecules do? So basically, it's a start of cascade of reaction, but it's not a single type of uh, linear reaction. It's a multiple reactions happening at the same time. So your complement, uh, your C3 can induce complement coating. So basically it coats the surface of your cells, your pathogenic cells, and it tells the phagocytes, the, uh, these are the leukocytes, the white blood cells, especially the macrophages, to actually eat this, uh, to phagocytize, to eat this um, enemy uh, cell. These are your, uh, usually they are uh, bacterial cells, so uh, to eat them and digest them. So that's one way. So another way is it also serves as a signal to the uh, to the look to the other white blood cells to come to this area because there is an invasion going on in this area. And then you have another one is it in, uh, it induces cell lysis, so it destroys the pathogen by itself. So how does the how does it uh, destroy the pathogen itself? So basically, uh, they they penetrate the cell membrane of the pathogen. So they initiate as a form of membrane attack complex. So they induce holes 
in the pathogen of the cell membrane so they induces the pores and then that this is data complement so the the pores the formation of the pores in the cell membrane so it it become the the membrane of the pathogen the, the pathogenic cell usually it's the bacterial cell becomes leaky and then they eventually die so basically that's a, they they put they poke many holes in the uh, the pathogen cells so those are some of the ways where the complement system actually fights off or in uh, involves themselves in the innate immune response so some complement proteins can target extra cell uh, the extracellular pathogens independently of antibodies this is through the pumps as we had seen earlier so normal body cells continuously produce proteins that inactivate the complement so this is to prevent uh, our innate immune response from attacking our own cells so it prevents the complement cascade from spreading into the healthy tissue so it, it's only contained in the area where the the pathogen are and not on other uh, nearby area because otherwise it will induce a necrosis on that area and it's actually quite bad so microorganisms do not make inhibitory proteins so they can be targeted for destruction so the the inhibitory proteins that inhibits the complement system is only for uh, or rather only available to the our own cells so it tells that uh, we are not your enemies we are friendly so basically, it's the inactivation, that's the signal of our own body cells to prevent the, the complement system from attacking us. So we also have uh, one of the mechanisms is the chemotaxis. Chemotaxis is basically how you follow a chemical trail. So just like um, in, the, in the second um, mechanism I discussed, so they serve as a signaling. So basically, that's a chemical trail. So phagocytic cells follow the gradient of the C3 molecules leading to the affected tissue. So if they see a high concentration of the cleaved C3 tissues there or C3 uh, proteins there, so that means uh, this is a hot zone. So neutrophils are the first responders usually to injury or infection. So the bone marrow produces about 50 billion new, new, new neutrophils per day. They can explode into ec the extracellular matrix that traps the pathogens. So some of them are just like kamikaze uh, phylots that explodes upon contact with the pathogen. And then they release their um, toxic uh, substances that kills off the pathogens. And then part of one of the soldiers, uh, the other soldiers are the macrophages. So they engulf everything that they can besides undamaged body cells. So they also alert the immune system to the presence of pathogens. And then we have the dendritic cells. They patrol the tissues that connect that contact the external environment. So an example of them are the respiratory airways lining. So here are some examples. So here is your uh, Klebsiella bacteria, which is the pathogen in the lung tissue that is ensnared in a neutrophil net and then we have also the macrophage caught in the process of engulfing the tuberculosis bacteria so you have it's, this is basically the macrophage and this is the tuberculosis bacteria and then the dendritic cell engulfing the anthrax bacteria so the the orange one is the anthrax bacteria this is your dendritic cells so the the cells of the immune system have uh, actually their uh, their shapes are actually quite varied they can change their shape in order to properly engulf their um, the their target so in uh, another part of the innate immunity is the inflammation which is the fast local response it helps destroy the infected or damaged tissue so it also helps start the healing process so the inflammation in during the inflammation process you have the basophils the mast cells or the neutrophils that are the granulating so remember uh, from our previous lecture when we had an overview of the immune cells we had uh, some granulated um, cells so uh, the granulate the granules inside those cells actually contains um, the prostaglandin system the different chemical makes up make up that helps in uh, fighting off the organisms so during the inflammation they release them by the granulating so they release those granules so the arterials uh, also the arterials widen so it speeds up the arrival of the phagocytic leukocyte so that's why uh, during the inflammation you will see redness of the area there's heat in the area uh, there is swelling because of the swelled uh, blood vessels basically your uh, blood cells are fighting off the infection in that area so here is a general view of what happens here so i will include this lecture in the uh, in the blackboard so that you can actually see them uh, clearly uh, in this uh, at your own uh, you can actually read and see them much more clearly so i won't really uh put mo uh, i will i won't really um delve too much into these images here so uh, you can read it at your own lecture leisure 
So, uh, following on with the inflammation, so what are the symptoms of inflammation? You have redness and warmth as well as swelling of the tissue. So, this swelling puts pressure on the nerves. That's why there is accompanying pain in the inflammation. So, inflammation does not only mean that um, when you are sick, but even when you just got a scratch. So, the area becomes red, becomes hot, and they becomes painful. So, basically, there's an inflammation in the area. So, the inflammation continues as long as its triggers are still there. So, macrophages begin to produce compounds that suppress inflammation and promote tissue repair when they have properly suppressed their, uh, the, the invading pathogens in the area. So, there's also a temporary, the temporary rise in body temperature above the normal. So, it often occurs in response to, of course, infection and injury. So, basically, this, uh, this rise in temperature also helps kill off the organism. So, brain cells make and release prostaglandins. So, these prostaglandins are, are types of signaling molecules. So, they act on the hypothalamus to increase the body's internal temperature set point. So, the skin blood vessels constrict to reduce heat loss. So, this also, um, you will sometimes uh, experience chills to increase the muscle heat output on the therapy. Although, the, the chills is a bit rare, uh, except for uh, during really fever-inducing inflammations. So, the fever increases the body's metabolic rate, tissue repair, and formation of the phagocytic leukocyte. So, basically, when you, you, got, you are sick and you have a fever, so the fever is a way of your body fighting off your infection. So, the fever causes many pathogens to reproduce more slowly because of its high temperature. So, the, the fever of 105 degrees uh, Fahrenheit or lower does not necessarily require treatment. But if it goes higher than that, of course, that means uh, the, the situation is dire, there is a problem, there is, uh, actually, of course, too high temperature can also kill you. So the body temperature will usually not rise above that value. And if it does, uh, the hospitalization will be, uh, if it does, hospitalization is now recommended. So when you have a greater than 105 degrees Celsius, you will have you need to go uh, to you need to actually um, go to the hospital now okay so that's it for the mechanisms of innate immunity in the next part we will look at the adaptive immune response